Hello everyone, welcome to the session on Salesforce where we will be discussing and understand everything that you need to know about the three main validation rules in Salesforce. But before we get started, if you like our video, please do not forget to subscribe to the Edureka YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss out on any updates. Also, if you guys are interested in our certification training, do check out the link given in the description below. So without any further delay, let's get on with today's agenda. First, we shall go through the basic understanding of validation rules in Salesforce, then see when should you use validation rules and how to create a validation rules in Salesforce with the help of a hands-on. Let's get started with the first topic, that is, what is a validation rules in Salesforce? A validation rule is something that verifies that data entered by user in records meets the standards specified before they can save it. Now, a validation can also contain a formula or expression that evaluates the data in one or more field and returns a value of true or false. Now, when the validation rule returns a value of true, this confirms that the data entered by the user contain an invalid value. Validation rules can also include error messages to display to the user now, when they enter invalid values based on specific criteria. Now, using these rules effectively contributes to the quality of data. For example, you can ensure that all phone numbers field contain a specific format or that the discount applied to a certain product never exceed a defined percentage. Now, let us see when should you use a validation rules. So, we use validation rules to maintain user input data or system modified records. User input data is where a user may be prone to making mistakes or cutting corners, or when you need data to be in a certain format. And a system modified records are the changes to data triggered by imports, automated processes, integrated system, etc., which will need to abide by validation rules. Now, having said that, validation rules are a safety net that these processes ideally should not bump up against each other. Admin should prepare or design automation or integrate system respecting active validation rules. As you will see later, you can also write a validation rule to bypass system modified records. Some of you out there might have a question like, why not simply make the field required? So the reason for this is that the required field are all or nothing. You must complete the field for the record to be created, whereas the validation rules kick in only under certain conditions. Now, we shall move on to how to create a validation rules in Salesforce. Now, when it comes to validation rules, it can be broken down into three main parts. The first is the name and description. Secondly, you have the rule that is the error condition formula. And lastly, you have the error message. Let's see how the close loss reason validation rule example looks from an admin perspective. Now, a clear name and description are very important as a small part of your ORG documentation that will be benefit others who wants to understand the purpose of the rule and or modify it in the future. So you should always remember to keep it short and simple. You may find that the description could be the same as the error message in step three, but you also have to add some context about who the rule was requested by or what data issue the rules is preventing. Let's go to the second criteria that are the rules or the error condition formula. Even though I've worked with the Salesforce platforms for years, I still need to refer back to the validation rules reference guide as setting up the validation rules itself is the trickiest part of this process to grab. Repeat, here you have the insert field, which opens a pop up that lists fields in the object, which you are writing the validation rules for. Next, you have the insert operators. Now, this opens a drop down menu that lists operators such as your add or not equal, etc. You may be familiar with most of them because they follow standard mathematics syntax. And the next is insert select functions. Now, this menu lists functions that you may be unfamiliar with. There are different types of functions in Salesforce, but you don't have to panic because luckily, by selecting one, a description appears below the list, as you can see in the diagram in the screen. Now, the most commonly used function is blank. Now, what this does is it returns a true if the field is blank. And the next you have is an is. What this does is it returns true if a pick list value in a field matches the pick list value in the formula. Then an AND return returns if all the items or functions are true. And an OR operator returns true if any of the items or functions are true. Now, to make it easier, I'll be showing and explaining some of the function in the demo, which I'll be illustrating later in the video. Now, the third and last is your error message. This error message will appear when a user does not meet the requirements set out by the validation rules. 
Now this is how the admin explain what the user must do to correct the record before clicking save again. Now the error message location can appear at top of the page or above the specific field causing the fail save. Now let's jump into the demo part and I'll be explaining it along about the rules to create a validation rule. Now a validation rule is often used to keep your data clean. Now let's hop into an opportunity and I'll show you guys some example of what a validation rule might look like. So we're going to go into just desktop and click on opportunities and into details. So here you can see that the next step is blank. Oftentimes I will see that the next step field is required for certain stages of an opportunity. So possibly for every single stage except for close. So this will make it so while it will be required we have another step. That is addition for requiring the next step and this is to only throw a requirement of that field when it is not close. Other things could be that the current generator is not filled out and the main competitors is filled out. That we have to have both of those filled out and not just a single one. Other things could be to make sure that you have delivery or installation status as far as when it's close want to require that field but only when it is close one. So those are a few examples of validation rules. They can be a little tricky if you are uploading data even though the wizard will bypass these when uploading data and the data loader but it does not bypass the validation rules. So be sure to either data upload during off times when you can turn off the validation rules or close down the system or try and use the data import wizard so you can bypass these. So now let's go into this and go straight into the edit object and scroll down to validation rules down here and I'm going to make a simple one just to require the next step to be filled out. You can also have this be where you want where you have some types of field that needs to be formatted the correct way that isn't like a phone number fields or an order number field or a percent field where they check for that but it is the text field and you need it to be filled out in a certain way then you can require that formatting. So let's go ahead and have this be the next step required. Okay so I have the rule name in the description. I like to think out my logic in the description when creating a validation rule or doing anything with logic within Salesforce on the admin site. So then I can return back to that and think of how I want to fill out the condition in the formula. Say throw an error when next step is equals to null. So there I just kind of explain in words how I want this formula to read. I personally find that incredibly helpful. So then if I'm working with other people or working together with a team, we can understand the kind of a thought process there. And of course we can come in and change this at any time. So I'm going to insert field. We can go through the different related ones on this, but I'm going to look for the next step field on the opportunity. Then we can go and insert and just have this to be equals to null. Okay, so how validation rules work with this is if the formula evaluates to be true, then it will throw an error. So if the next step is not equal to null, then it will throw an error. If it was filled out the same way if it had contained the letter A, if it contains the letter A, then it will throw an error. So whenever this evaluates to be true, then it will throw an error. Now checking the syntax is really important before you save it. So then you can understand if you have errors because sometimes you'll get an error for the wrong things and if it's not specified. So if you had like quotation marks around this or if I had a pick list value, it might throw an error but it can be very indicative of what the error actually is and so it'll be a foolish pursuit of something unattainable. Okay, so now that we have this, let's actually talk about other functions. Now these bring other things that we can do with our validation rules. So one thing I like to know is is pick value. If you have any type of pick list value, you have the is pick list value function there to use the pick list in your validation rules. Other thing is you could use is null in the circumstances as well as you could have use is number. So let's say you have a text field but you didn't want to have any numbers in the text field. Like next step could be great for not having any numbers in that pick list values because there shouldn't be any number there. Now if people were putting numbers in the wrong spot, then you can put that in there. Let's say they're putting in in the description box rather into the appropriate field. That could be a way to help make sure that your data is clean. And again, there are tons and tons of these different functions that you can use. I'll just scroll down. Now we finally have the error message. This is going to help us know that what is wrong and this is why I like validation rules because you can say, hey, this is where you're getting the error. Please fix it and this is how you can fix it. 
it's really an easy way to tell your user what the issue is. So I'm going to say must have next step and we can choose to have this to be at the top of the page or on the field. I'm going to have this at the top of the page because validation rules make it so that you can't save the record and I don't want them navigating off thinking that they saved the record when they actually didn't save the record. So I'm going to hit save. Now when that is done and it is activated, you can toggle this on and off just by hitting edit. Let us go ahead and go back to our opportunity and try and save this without a next step. There we go. We have saved it. Now the next step is to hit us back with an error prompt message that we haven't saved it yet. So let's go ahead and say going back to the drawing board and click on save. There we go. Now we have created a successful validation role. So with this, we have come to the end of this video. So that was all about the concept behind the requirement of validation rules. Thank you for attending this session. I hope this video was helpful and you get a better understanding of what the validation rules are. If you have any doubts or queries, then please leave a comment below and we will get back to you as soon as possible. If you like this video, please press the like icon and subscribe to our channel for more such content. See you in the next video. Until then, happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!